Hey friends, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and I am super excited to share with you my brand new pattern, the Bronwyn Shawl. The Bronwyn Shawl is an asymmetrical triangle shawl that's worked in three colors. It opens up with some solid stitches, transitions to some striping and mesh, and then plays around with textured stitches and finishes up with your choice of two borders. On today's video, we're gonna walk through picking the perfect yarn for this project and I'm also going to stitch up samples of each of the sections. So let's jump right in. While watching this video, I strongly encourage you to pull up the Brownwin shawl pattern, which is available for free on my blog, tlycblog.com. You can also find a printer-friendly version of the pattern on my website, tlyarncrafts.com. Links to both of those resources are in the description. When you're first starting out making the Bronwyn shawl, the major decision you have to make is which yarn you're going to use. This is a really big project. You're gonna be spending a lot of time with it. So I strongly encourage you to pick a yarn that will be a pleasure to work with throughout the entire process. The original sample was made with the Baby Wool from We Are Knitters. This is 100% alpaca, and I used the colors gray, mustard, and spotted blue. You can find details in the original pattern about how much yardage you need for each of these colors. The reason I chose baby alpaca for this project is because since it is so large I wanted something that was going to have fantastic drape and baby alpaca definitely does it's a heavier type fiber um, so while this is considered a worsted weight it definitely looks a lot thinner but it blooms a lot and that heavy fiber gives you some really good drape also I just love the idea of this being a luxurious fiber it's super duper soft to the touch it's gonna feel amazing around your neck and your face so I think if you really want to just go all out and treat yourself a baby alpaca is a great choice for this project if Baby alpaca just isn't your speed. I totally get that. My recommendation for an alternative for this project is going to be a DK weight 100% merino. For today's sample, I'm actually going to be working with Sugarbush Crisp, and I want to give a special thanks to my friends at Yarnspiration for providing the yarn support for this video. So Sugarbush Crisp is a 100% extra fine superwash merino and you can just look at this yarn and see it's got beautiful twist it's got a really great bounce to it the texture is amazing it doesn't have a lot of halo to it which means I'm going to have really great stitch definition so the colors that I have here are going to be cream this one's mango and this one is called fiesta now, when it comes to your Bronwyn shawl, you can really jump out the window and use whatever you want. I think the main things to keep in mind are going to be the drape um, in your project and really making sure that you're using a nicer fiber that's actually going to block well. I wouldn't encourage using acrylic yarn for a project like this unless you find something that's really, really nice. Um, this is a second sample that I made. This one is actually made out of Malabrigo Arroyo, which is a sport weight yarn, and I use the colors Coffee Toffee, Sandbank, in Vulcan. So in addition to your yarn, you're also going to need uh, some tools. You're going to need a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And I use the five and a half millimeter crochet hook for both of my samples, the sport weight and the worsted weight version of this shawl. You're also going to need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. So this shawl offers the option of two different borders. If you choose the crochet applied eye cord border, you're also going to need a locking stitch marker and either a knitting needle tip or a cable needle. And you'll want that needle to be the same size as your crochet hook. We're going to start things off with our A color. We're going to make a slip knot, place that slip knot on our hook, and we're going to chain five. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's the second chain, single crochet there, and also single crochet in the next chain. And then we've got two chains left, and we're going to place two single crochets in each of those chains. So there's one and two. So that row ends with six total single crochet stitches. Here in row two, we're gonna chain one and turn, and now we're gonna place two single crochets in the first stitch. So here's our first single crochet here. We're gonna work under both loops and place two single crochets there, and then single crochet across to the last two stitches. So single crochet in each stitch across until we have two stitches left, which are right here. And if you need to, as you're working this pattern, you can place stitch markers in your first and last stitches. Um, it gets a lot easier once your project is a little bit larger to see those last stitches. Um, so we've worked across to our last two stitches and we're gonna single crochet two together over those last two stitches. So 
pull up a loop in the first stitch, pull up a loop in the second stitch, working under both loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops for a single crochet two together. And then we're going to chain one and turn. And then for row three, we're gonna single crochet across to our last two stitches and increase in each of those. So single crochet across to our last two stitches, which are right here. And then we're going to place two single crochets in each of those stitches. So here's one and two, and two, so two single crochets in that first stitch and two single crochets in the second stitch. All right, and now for row four, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to place two single crochets in this first stitch here. There's one and two. Single crochet across to the last two stitches and then do a decrease. So single crochet across to our last two stitches which are right here, and pull up a loop in each of those stitches, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So rows three and four are the repeat for the first part of the Brahmin shawl. So we're gonna go through those rows again together. So we're gonna chain one and turn and single crochet across to the last two stitches and increase in each of those last two stitches. So just single crocheting across so normal single crochets through both loops. So we're at our last two stitches and we're going to increase in both of those. And by increase, I mean two single crochet stitches in both of those stitches. So we're adding two stitches on this row. Now we're gonna chain one and turn and we're gonna increase here. So we're adding a stitch at this point and then single crocheting across to the last two stitches and we're gonna decrease there. So we're gonna have like a net zero increase on this row because we're increasing at the beginning and then decreasing at the end. So we're at our last two stitches here, pull up a loop in each of those, yarn over and pull through. So it's a little tough to see right now, but we do have the beginning of our triangle. I'm gonna keep going with this part. You'll repeat rows three and four until the working row has a total of 58 stitches. So when you have 58 stitches across here, just make sure as you continue to go that you're keeping an even number of stitches here. You should have an even number at the end of every single row. So just keep going until you have 58 total stitches. I'm gonna work up a little bit more of the swatch. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I'm gonna work up a little bit more of the swatch and then we'll move on to part two. Even after just a few rows, we can already see the boomerang taking shape in our shawl. This is exactly what it should look like, but much, much larger for yours, of course. So moving on to section two, we actually want to change to color B on our next row. So I just finished a row, well, I'm finishing up a row for repeat. And after this last stitch, I'll want to change color. So I'm pulling up my loops for my single crochet decrease here. And instead of yarning over and pulling through with my current color, I'll actually wanna drop that color and pull up my B color, which for me is gonna be this cream. Then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through those three loops with my B color. Now I will say with this shawl for sections two and three, you're gonna work three rows with one color and then one row with the other color, which means that you could end up with a lot of ends. You can, if you want to, work over your ends and that'll eliminate you needing to weave in so many ends later, or you can just let them hang, pour yourself a glass of wine at some point and weave in all of your ends. I mean, that's what I did, but to each her own, okay? We're gonna chain one and we're gonna turn and we're gonna do row one of section two, which is just a chain one and we're gonna single crochet across to our last two stitches and increase in each of our last two stitches. So it's very, very similar to what we were working on in section one already. So I'm just gonna continue single crocheting across to my last two stitches, and I'm gonna put two single crochets in each of those. Almost there. So I've still got three stitches here. And these are my last two stitches, so I'm going to single crochet in each. Now, I want to change color again, so I'm going to 
cut this color. I'm going to cut this color as well because uh, my A color is what I need to pick up for row two of section two. So I'm just going to grab my scissors. I'm going to cut my B color, leaving myself a nice long tail to weave in later. I'm going to cut my A color so I can bring that up to my working row. Again, leaving a nice long tail. And I'm going to finish that single crochet with my A color. Just like that. And we're going to chain one and turn. Just kind of tighten it down a little bit. And I'm going to put two single crochets in this first stitch here. And then I'm going to single crochet across to my last two stitches and decrease in those, just like we've been doing before. So continue on with that and meet me back here for row three of section two. Just about done here. I've just got my decrease. Yarn over, pull through all three, and now I'm going to chain two and turn. So here in row three, we're going to start out by placing a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And just so you know, this starting chain two does not count as a stitch. So half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And now we're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, half double crochet in the following stitch. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet in the following. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet in the following. And we're gonna do that until we have just four stitches left in our row. So here's one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna do this one more time. There's my half double crochet. And I'm gonna chain one skip the next stitch. I'm going to place two half double crochets in this following stitch. There's one and there's two. And then I'm going to chain one, skip the next and place two half double crochets in this final stitch. And that's what's going to help me maintain the shape of my shawl as I continue on with this mesh section. So now for row four, I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to place two single crochets in this first stitch and then single crochet in each half double crochet and each chain space. So I've got another half double crochet right here. So I'm going to single crochet in that and single crochet in the chain space. I've got two half double crochets here. So make sure you don't miss that single crochet in both of those. And then I'm going to single crochet in this next chain space, single crochet in this half double crochet and this chain space. And I'm going to repeat that all the way down my row until I get to my last two stitches. So now I'm at my last two stitches here and I'm going to need to single crochet two together over those stitches. But my next row, um, which is a repeat of row one, uh, is going to be worked in color B. So again, like I said before, there's a lot of color changes um, because this is just the way that this project works up. I'm going to make sure I've got my color B handy, make sure I've got it nearby. And I'm going to single crochet two together over this stitch. So I'm going to now drop my A color, grab my B color, yarn over and pull up that loop. OK, so those four rows the one row of color B and the three rows of color A, that is the repeat for this row and you for this section. And you'll want to repeat rows one through four, 11 total times. So let's go through it again together. I'm going to chain one and turn. So this is a row one repeat. I'm going to single crochet across to my last two stitches. And I'm going to increase, so two single crochets in each of my last two stitches. So single crochet across. Here I am at my last two stitches. I'm going to increase in each of those, so two single crochets in each of those. So there's one single crochet in that last stitch. Since I will need to change color in my next row, I'm going to go ahead and cut my A color so I can pull that up finish this stitch off. So I've got one more single crochet to place in this stitch and I'm going to yarn over with my A color to complete that single crochet stitch. Chain one and turn. 
just tighten it down a little bit. So now for row two, we've chained one and turned. We're going to place two single crochets in this first stitch, single crochet across, and then single crochet two together in the last two stitches. So I'm at my last two stitches here. I'm just pulling up loops in each of those stitches, yarn over, pull through for your decrease. And now we're moving on to row three. So chaining two and turn, we're gonna half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then chain one, skip one, half double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet in the next. Repeat that across until we've got four stitches left. So we've got our last four stitches here. We're gonna chain one, skip one, two half double crochet in the next stitch. There's one and two. Chain one, skip one, two half double crochets in the last stitch. There's one and two. So now we're going to chain one and turn. And here in row four, we're going to place two single crochets in this first stitch. Now we're going to single crochet in each half double crochet and each chain space. So remember, we've got a half double crochet right here. Single crochet in the chain space. We've got two half double crochet stitches here. So there's one and two singles and a single crochet in the chain space. And now we've got a half double and a space half double and a space. So single crochet in each stitch in each space across to the last two stitches. So here I am at my last two stitches and I'm going to single crochet two together over those, but I will need to change color to restart my rows one through four repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my B color so I can bring it up to my working row. Let's start that single crochet decrease and we're going to end it with our B color. Making sure we leave a nice long tail because we'll need to weave that in later. Yarning over and pulling through. So you can already see that really pretty uh, repeat pattern. So we're going to do 11 total repeats of this four row repeat. So the repeat, remember, is one row in our B color three rows in our A color. So I've got two repeats here. We wanna repeat this until we have 11 total repeats. And then we'll move on to section three. So I'm gonna do a few more off camera, you work on those and I'll see you in a minute. After a few more rows, we can really see the project coming together. I'll kind of widen out a little bit. So we've still got our boomerang shape. And as you can see, with all of our color changes, we do have a lot of ends. Again, you can work over those or just weave them in later. So, Let's just pretend I've got all my row repeats here for section two. Um, after your row four repeat, your very last one, you're ready to change to section three. Now section three is identical to section two, but instead of your A color, you're gonna be using your C color. And for my C color, I've got this um, uh, Fiesta color here. So I'm going to finish up this decrease. So single crochet two together over these two half double crochet stitches. And now row one is worked with my B color. So I'm going to work row one just like I have before. And when I get to rows two, three, and four, I'm gonna switch to my new color. And you'll want to repeat um, those four rows using that new color 13 total times or until you run out of yarn, whatever happens first. So there's not an exact science to this. Get as far as you can, and then we can move on to section four. So I only did two repeats of rows one through four um, for my section three, but you'll want to do 13 total. Now I'm gonna move on to section four. I want to finish up my stitches here and switch to my B color. Yarn over pull through those last three stitches, and I'm going to chain two for the beginning of that row. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my C color just to get it out of my way because we won't need that anymore for this project. Okay, 
So section four is a really nice textured section. It uses um, some front post stitches to achieve this really gorgeous um, kind of bumpy texture. So we're gonna start off with our chain two, which again does not count as a stitch. And we're gonna half double crochet across to the last two stitches and increase in each of those last two stitches. So just half double crocheting in each stitch across before we were single crocheting in each st stitch across and increasing in the last two. Now we're going to half double crochet in each stitch across and to place two half double crochets in each of the last two stitches of this row. So I'm here at my last two stitches and I'm going to increase in each of those. So that just means I'm going to place two half double crochets in each of those stitches. So there's one and here's two. All right, so now we're going to turn, chain two and turn. We're gonna place two half double crochets in this first stitch. There's one and two. And we're gonna front post double crochet around the next stitch, which is right here. So we're gonna yarn over, working around the stitch. So go in and around that stitch. Yarn over, pull up the loop. We've got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Half double crochet in the next stitch. It's just here. Front post double crochet around the following stitch. So going around that stitch, yarn over and pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then a half double crochet in the following stitch. And we're gonna repeat that down the row. Front post, double crochet around the next stitch, half double crochet in the following stitch. Just repeat that across until we get to our last three stitches and then I'll meet you there. I'm nearing the end of my row here. I've got a front post double crochet going around this stitch and a half double crochet going into this stitch. I'm now at my last three stitches. So I'm going to front post double crochet around the next stitch and then half double crochet two together over these last sti two stitches. So I'm gonna yarn over, then pull up a loop in each of those stitches, yarn over and pull through all four. And now for row three, we're gonna chain one and turn, single crochet in each stitch across to the last two, single crochet, place two single crochets in each of the last two stitches for our increase. Go ahead and work on that, which we've done a million times at this point, uh, and meet me back here for row four. Now we're back on the right side of our work to start our row four. So I've already done my chain two. I'm gonna place two half double crochets in this first stitch, and then half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. There's one and two. Now we're gonna get into the repeat for this row. So I'm going to front post double crochet around the half double crochet two rows below. So instead of working in this row, I'm coming down to this row. So this was a front post double crochet here. This is the half double crochet that we're gonna place our front post double crochet around. And then we're gonna half double crochet in the next stitch. Front post double crochet around the half double crochet two rows below. half double crochet in the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat that across. Making sure we place the half double crochet in the next stitch. So as you can see, we're getting this really nice texture happening here where we've got a front post and then we've got front post, a row above it on either side of it. So we're just gonna repeat that across the row. And then we're gonna do a couple more repeats of rows three and four, because rows three and four are the repeat for this section. So keep on doing that across until you get to the last three stitches of the row. I'm nearly at the end of my row here. I've got a front post double crochet to go around this half double crochet stitch and a half double to go in the next one. So I've got three stitches left and I'm going to front post double crochet around the half double crochet two rows down. And then half double crochet, two stitches together here. Yarn over and pull through the four. So we're already seeing the texture a little bit. Your project is gonna curl a touch because we're pulling, um, we're going down a couple rows. Uh, but once you block it, this section will stay 
really nice and flat. So we're going to do another repeat of rows three and four. So row three, of course, starts with a chain one and turn, single crochet in each stitch across, increasing in each of the last two stitches. So two single crochets in each of the last two stitches. Go ahead and do that and meet me back here and we'll do row four together again. So that's it for row three. I'm back on the right side of my work um, to start row four. So row four again starts with a chain two and two half double crochets in the first stitch and then a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then we're going to front post double crochet in the half double crochet that's two rows below. So that's this guy right here. And then half double crochet in the next stitch. So since we half double crocheted in this stitch, that compensates for this stitch here. So we're going to the next stitch for our next front post double crochet and a half double crochet in the following stitch. And again, we're just going to be working in the half doubles that are between the front post double crochets from two rows below. Half double crochet in the next stitch, front post double crochet in the following stitch. So you're going to continue to offset these stitches so you have that nice pretty texture. So I'm going to continue that on. You can meet me at the end of the row. So as you continue on with your section for repeats, you're going to continue to see that texture emerge and you just continue repeating rows three and four. And you're going to do that until this decrease edge, this edge of your shawl measures eight inches, making sure that you finish with the row four repeat, which is the one that has the front post double crochet stitches. So once you're done with section four, when this section measures eight inches total, you're going to want to pick a border option. Now there are two border options when it comes to the Bronwyn shawl. The first border option is the one that I placed on the original Bronwyn shawl project. And this one is actually an applied crochet eye cord. I actually have a separate video for that, which I will put right up here somewhere, I think. <laughs> um, and you can check out how to do an applied uh, crochet eye cord border. I absolutely love this border because it's so sleek. It reminds me a lot of a knit eye cord and it's actually way easier than it looks even though it involves using a crochet hook and a knitting needle at the same time. I did a crochet along with this shawl and a lot of people picked it up very very easily especially with the aid of the video. There are also written instructions for that pattern on the blog post. So that is one option and then if you don't love the applied I cord or find that it's a little too challenging we also have the option of this really really cute bobble border so this pattern of course is exactly the same just work with different yarn and this is the other border option so I actually originally found this border on another blog which I have linked to down in the description so I won't do the actual tutorial for that because they have a video for it already once you've picked your border and added it to your project, the last thing that you'll want to do is your finishing. So you'll want to weave in all of your ends and then you can put your project in a bit of warm water with some dish soap or some wool wash. Let it sit there for about 20 minutes or so. Take it out. Make sure you wring it out. Don't twist it. Just wring it out. Um, put it on some blocking boards with some pins so it lays nice and flat because um, even though this is curved right now, the material of... Um, animal fiber yarn so like a merino wool which of course is uh, from sheep or using an alpaca based yarn like that will really lay down and block beautifully so your shawl will be gorgeous and you won't get any of this extra curling and then You'll be ready to take pictures and share it with me on Instagram using the hashtag Brown Shawl. Thank you so much for hanging out with me to make this project together. I can't wait to see yours.